Hello, everyone. So this is uh, thank you for joining the session today. And we are from Arm Lab, a team dedicated to open source drones and robots. Uh, it is a great honor to share our works based on PIX4, which is Prometheus, the open source autonomous drone project at the PIX4 Developer Summit. Our open source project it has a third on PX4 users and the intelligent drone researchers in China and has formed a technical community with a good circle. The project started with several doctoral students whom were classmates of Beijing Institute of Technology. And now this project has gathered uh, drone development platforms, online video courses, and technical forums. So in the session today, we will introduce the Prometheus project, what it is, how it's wrong, why it is so cool, and display some brilliant works done by Prometheus users. So before we start, I would like to introduce our team members. As you can see, we are a quite big team. In addition to the contributors of Prometheus and the staff of Arm Lab, we also invited a student and an intern who is starting the Prometheus project and is active in the community. Because we hope to express the significance of the Prometheus project through diversified discussions by project participants in different roles. So my teammates, um, please say hello when I mention your name. So first of all, uh, Dr. Qi Yuhua, the founder and main contributor of Prometheus. OK, hello, everyone. Good I'm Yuhua Qi. <laughs> and next, uh, Mr. Yixing, uh, our Ross and the drone engineer. Hello. Hello, everyone. So those two belong to the Prometheus maintenance team. And next, Mr. Mo Shuangqi, who is the founder and CEO of Arm Lab. Uh, so he is still of the night, so we just uh, passed, passed him by. Okay. Uh, so, so the next, uh, Ms. Ms. Wei Jingwen. She is a postgraduate of control theory and also be a media operation intern in Arm Lab. Hello, Miss Wei. Okay, maybe you need to find a, a quiet and a large place. Maybe it will be a replace. And the last one is me, Xiao Quan, and I am a sales engineer and will be the main speaker of the presentation today uh, for some reasons. And my teammates will help me to answer questions in chat areas during the presentation. So uh, let us begin. I believe some people are already curious about uh, what Prometheus actually is. So here is our official definition. So Prom Prometheus is an open source software platform for drones, which provides a complete software environment for the development of intelligent and autonomous flight. This project is based on PIX4 and ROS. The purpose is to provide PIX4 and ROS developers with a more concise and the faster R&D process by integrated development tools. At present, modules such as mapping, positioning, planning, control, and visual dictation have been integrated, and as the gazebo simulation is also provided. So in a nutshell, Prometheus is essentially a ROS development environment on Ubuntu 18.04, which have integrated ROS, MarvelOS, CUDA, OpenCV, and other ROS packages, such as Cartographer, YOLO, and a -Star algorithms. So on the other hand, the output results of all these ROS packages can be used as control commands for the drone and send to the Pixhawk flight control through the conversation of the Prometheus control module. And this is the truth about Prometheus. Uh, users can obtain Prometheus by installing, uh, by installation through wiki tutorials, uh, Docker, and or just use the ISO file packaged by us as their intelligent drone simulation development tool or operating system of, all, of aerial robots. So Prometheus 
uh, significantly reduce the time of users to configure Rust installation, uh, flight control communication, and uh, animated bugs caused by different software versions. Users no longer need to worry that their mapping Rust package only supports uh, melodic, but their version dictation Rust package only supports for a kinetic. So with the provisions, they will have them all, and also with easy to understand code comments and a lot of simulation demos. So here is the uh, so here is the address where we host the Prometheus project on GitHub, uh, currently operated by Armlamp. And if you like it or interested, we are very grateful for giving us a star. So um, as mentioned before, in addition to our own PIX4 drone control module, Prometheus also integrated many well-known artificial intelligence and robotics open source projects. So let's see what Prometheus can do, and we will show it by gazebo simulation. So the first is our drone, our drone control terminal. This is can be said to be the core of the Prometheus project and the foundation of the entire project. The control terminal is a modifiable drone position control command to the PIX4 drone via Marvelous. So in fact, all algorithms can actually control the drone because the output results are converted into PIX4 flight control instructions through the control module. The control module can not only be used as the control terminal of a single drone, it can also be used as a centralized control terminal for multi-drone formation. And on the other hand, we, when we use ROS network, each intelligent drone has its own control terminal. At this time, the drone formation can realize distributed communication and control. In Prometheus, we have many building information flying programs, and they all very easy to be modified. Distributed control is different from drone flight light show. It is a technology that is of great concern in the fields of military and smart cities. Well, next, take a look at the same packages integrated by Prometheus. In Prometheus, can also be said to be a big family. We have RTAB map, OctaMap, RGBD mapping, and OpsLab. Too many, really. Uh, STEM technology is well developed in unmanned vehicles, um, but trust them to the drone is a quite big challenge. Drones are not as stable as unmanned vehicles. Therefore, the accuracy of mapping is much worse, actually. But for drones, the more important part of STEM is to provide positioning data. VL based on vision and IMU is also an important part of the STEM module. The tracking camera uh, T265 and the depth camera D435i uh, of the Intel Resins are our most commonly used sensors in Prometheus. Other users also provided experience from uh, 2D and 3D LiDAR. We have to admit that the current role of SLAM on drones is limited, but uh, Prometheus is a good testing platform, and we can see some crazy experiments from our users later. So, let's look at the next. Um, act so, obstacles and uh, the past planning is also another important part of the Prometheus. We have global planning algorithms such as A star and the local planning algorithms such as APF and VFH. Like SAM, most of these algorithms are designed for unmanned vehicles. The attitude changes of drones make these algorithms more limited. They cannot make the drone avoid obstacles above or below. Therefore, we have also uh, integrated Fast Planner and Eagle Planner from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology and Zhejiang University. They are generally regarded as a fast path planning algorithm 
based on vision and depth information, which provides drones with the ability to quickly and autonomously fly. This fast autonomous flight capability can even be developed in drone formation flight. So let's talk about uh, visual recognition. Uh, as a hot field of artificial intelligence, it is, uh, it is of course included in the Prometheus code base. So QR code, number, and face recognition, and ULO, of course. Uh, but we do not hope that the drones equipment uh, equipped with Prometheus will only do some tricks for scanning QR codes. Uh, we hope that the visual recognition of drones can be combined with drone control. So in the vision module, we use the identification of specific targets for the tracking, the precise landing of mobile platforms, and the crossing flight. We even combined uh, Yolo V5 and uh, NVIDIA Tensor RT to achieve uh, multi-target recognition. I can and we can show you there. Okay, okay that's set. So, so we can click on one of the targets to let the drone to track. And uh, you can also cancel the tracking and then select the next target to track. Uh, to be honest, we now only hope that it will not be used for military purpose. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, military research institutions have already used it, and they are proud to show their experimental results for us. Uh, sorry, I can't show it, but actually we did this only for the drone, could easily find the person who needed to follow. So this is a general play of the Prometheus project and what it can do. So it is uh, very easy to learn and use software framework. And in order to further reduce the difficulty of using it, the maintenance team has also prepared a wiki, a small test, and the many courses material to guide. So all these resources can be obtained through these links, uh, including this, uh, these slides. So in, so in addition, we have many discussion communities, including forums and chat groups. The doctors in the team will also regularly uh, broadcast live on our video channel to share technical experience. So how about uh, actual simulation experiment by Prometheus? So let's do a, uh, let's do like a ego taste. Sorry, guys, please wait me to open the. The video. I need to. Oh, sorry guys, I, it seems like I can't share my desktop. I don't know why. Website. Sorry guys, please wait a minute, sorry.
Okay, it's back. Got it. Okay, so guys, here let's do a, a, a eagle planner test. So here's our old friends of Ross, uh, Gazebo and our base. So let's uh, give a target point of the drones, so we can see that the drone can, uh, it's like they can avoid the obstacles and uh, we can get a little faster and we can see it can uh, cross the calendars smoothly and easy. So, but sadly, it's usually not happen in our actual flight tests. Uh, next, it's really a sad story. So, uh, next, maybe we can do a formation test. Let's run another video. A minute. Okay, here, bingo. So here we can see that's a formation control terminal, actually. So we can have a certain programmed and uh, formation commands in the terminal. So it's like we can tap zero or two, and they can fly just as our program formation. And we can even change we can even uh, make them like a smooth to a certain more formation in during the flight, like a circle, like a square, or like a triangle, and it's all in a real time to control. It's actually every drone will have their own uh, onboard computer and running the Prometheus onboard system, and that's how our formation control to be like a distributed control not like a centralized, not like the uh, flying uh, flight, flight light show, like something like that. So all these uh, simulations and uh, program and even algorithms, they all open source and with uh, easy to understand commands and those we, everybody can get it in our GitHub address. So that's just a little, uh, little taste, so let's let us uh, back to the presentation. Okay, here we, here we go. Okay, let's back to the presentation. Okay, so uh, I, I, I can see some people ask, so how does the premiere work? So we can also what is a, and what is the framework of Prometheus. So let's talk briefly about this. So Prometheus is not just a software for uh, simulation. The purpose is to be deployed on the drone as an onboard and operating system to run all algorithms. So uh, collect sensor data and issue instructions to the actuators. That's what Prometheus do. And here is a a schematic diagram of a typical drone that uses Prometheus as the onboard system. So we can see that its core is still the PIX4 flight controller and uh, responsible for the attitude control and flight of the drone. And uh, here uh, is uh, an NVIDIA Jitsun Zever NX, an H system, and Prometheus just runs on it. And take a look at this more uh, intuitive diagram like this. So uh, the data of the external sensors are gathered here and uh, processed in all by algorithms. And uh, the final position control commands is sent to the uh, to the tele tele two of the flight control through the the TTL zero line. And uh, so that's actually the framework is very simple, right? So here is a system architecture of the Prometheus. So this is, so it can be seen that the two core modules are 
uh, estimator module and which is the source of positioning data and the posi position controller. So where all the algorithm output goes is to there, so the controller. All other modules, including the position, the SAM, the planning, and the task modules, that all uh, can be called that uh, provide just input uh, the data for those two, and finally to the flight control. So that is uh, that is the system framework of Prometheus. So everybody can get it in our GitHub. So uh, so let's keep talk about the history and the influence of the Prometheus. I'd like to say after uh, several years of development, the Prometheus project has beyond software and become a system with many different forms of existence. So in addition to open source project, uh, Prometheus has become the code name for a series of drones. And the Prometheus series is an open source drone development platform for R&D, so which installed complete Prometheus onboard system designed and manufactured by ArmLab. So furthermore, uh, Prometheus is becoming a standard, an open source drone standard that uses a standardized onboard system and uh, supports most payloads and algorithms. And uh, yes, we know we copied Android, sorry, but we really want to try such title like that. And what brought this change was the cooperation between ArmLab and the open source team. So ArmLab is actually a company that provides open source platforms and uh, components. We uh, treat Prometheus as a software standard to operate and manage and also design and produce a drone platform, especially for Prometheus. At the same time, we operate a technical community to maintain the, uh, vi the vitality of the open source project to make sure that uh, everybody, uh, to make sure that we can have many people to use that. So uh, now the Prometheus community has formed like a circle. We have a GitHub project, and plus a technical forum, so the open source drone platform, and uh, we also have this. It's like it's like a product or a platform for just for use uh, R and D and development, and we also have uh, online video courses that we produced. So no matter which uh, part the users learn about Prometheus, they can all enter this circle. Those who use the Prometheus project will use our drones directly or build their own autonomous drones based on Prometheus standards. So in this process, uh, their questions can be answered by online video courses. And when someone becomes a Prometheus master and uh, he can make his own contribution to the Prometheus project. So now Prometheus has more than uh, 10,000 of users in various uh, universities, laboratories, and the research institutions in China. And there are about like uh, 500 uh, senior developers who uh, continue to communicate in the project discussion group every day, actually. So uh, here I want to show some specific products of the Prometheus project. And uh, the first is Prometheus of ArmLab. So they all equipped with Prometheus onboard system and uh, are designed separately for swarm, indoor autonomous operation, and outdoor industrial applications, according to their uh, size, actually. So, okay, here we going to uh, next on some results of previous users. So this is an indoor distributed drone cluster control or formation control. So uh, each drone has its own onboard computer and runs the Prometheus onboard system. It's like it's stuck. Sorry, my computer stuck. It's actually a GIF file. They can move actually. Sorry, wait a minute. Okay, it's moving. It's moving. And stuck again, uh, sad. 
So uh, they are positioned through the motion capture system and one of the drones issues control commands to the other drones. So uh, every drone is like the same. Every drone can be the commander to the to all the distributors. So uh, let's do the next. So this users uh, use this, the Prometheus drone for indoor search operations. Uh, however, he was uh, very cautious and used a lot of QR codes to give drone some mark point. Uh, nevertheless, it is still difficult to uh, for such a large drone to fly in a narrow indoor environment. So let's look at next. So this company used Prometheus 600 for internal exploration and match. So yes, they installed a 3D LiDAR on the drone, and which may be uh, too heavy for the drone, but they actually they did the great work and uh, it's just amazing because it's, this drone is just like the drone in the Prometheus movie. So actually I try to make them move. So it's like a GIF. So it's not very stable, but it's actually can fly. That's a great work. So here's the video. This um, it's mute. So this is a uh, this is a vision based autonomous obstacle evidence and path planning for drone implemented by a university team using Prometheus 200. So to be honest. Uh, although they use modules in Prometheus uh, through op optimization and training, the actual flight effect is excellent, better than us. So now their optimized code has been contributed to the Prometheus project and has been widely produced. So that's our main purpose to maintain the open source project. It's like uh, every contributor can be the this can be the students, can be the developers, and we just want to more and more people join and contribute to our to our project. So let's look at the next. Next are two test videos of our own test. So this is a target training, and we can find this. Yeah, so this is a target tra tracking by KCF. The drone uses pixels to maintain a uh, relative distance from the target during the tracking. And this, back again, okay, it's moved. This square is just made by uh, the mouse keep. So the drone will keep the relative distance from the target by the, by the judging of the, the size of the pixel and the number of pixels. Just like that. Here is the desktop of the drones. So we can see that. So here we go to the next. So uh, as this is a information control of five drones, and they use the task modules and the video coordination module to take off and net from the same place in an ordinary manner. It's gets just a little faster. So we can see here's the QR code and we our our drones they will land by recognizing the QR code to just land as what they what the place they they take off. So okay, I think here's Okay, thank you everyone. So this is basically uh, the introduction. And uh, so this is probably the basic situation for the Prometheus project. 
uh, but I do not dare forget to introduce the main contributors of the project. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the uh, big four and uh, they are all PhDs and the classmates in Beijing Institute of Technology. They all contributed different modules to the Prometheus project. So Dr. Qi Yuhua, <coughs> sorry, uh, is charged for drone control and the drone formation. And uh, Dr. Jin Ren is create all the video parts. And Dr. Jiang Tao is responsible for planning and positioning. And Dr. Li Chunyu is responsible for the state uh, estimation. And uh, here are our engineers who are responsible for turning permissions from code and simulation into a real drone. So the problems to be solved by simulation to real drones are often catastrophic. And I'm very happy with their excellent capabilities in Rust and the development. So thank you everyone. This is basically the introduction of Prometheus project itself. And the next consider our team members are actually from uh, different groups. We wanna to explore the Prometheus project from a diversity discussion. So how about start with uh, this way? So she just started the Prometheus just not more than a year. So uh, how about you, Ms. Wen? Are you there? So can you share experience in using the Prometheus project and what does it bring to you? Hello, Wei Jingwen. <coughs> Wei Jingwen. Hello, can you hear me? Hmm? Wait a minute. So I got it. She she just offline. Sorry, guys. So maybe we just uh, moving to the next. Uh, sad to show Miss Weijing Wen's what he do. It's actually uh, I'm sure I assume you guys that uh, Weijing Wen is uh, Miss Wei is just uh, very active in our community, and uh, she uh, it hasn't been a year since she started starting, and now she mm -hmm. even has her own video course channel and provide guidance on PIX4 and Rust learning for other students. That's really a great work. So next, we want to interview Dr. Chi. OK, uh, hello, Dr. Chi. Can you tell us uh, why you choose to open source the Prometheus project? Uh, OK, hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, Prometheus project comes from my PhD thesis, actually. Uh, when I started my PhD career, my supervisor asked me to do some research about uh, autonomous drones. At that time, I found PX4 firmware and uh, the off-board mode, uh, which can help me to control the drone with a companion computer, uh, like Resume Pi or Text2, and so on. And then I came into contact with Melrose Rose and some Rose packages about autonomous drones. Uh, these things have greatly helped my PhD research I can easily to verify my own algorithm. At, at the same time, I found that many people in the school have the same needs as me. I have a friend called uh, Jing Ren. Uh, he's also one of the founder of the Prometheus project. Also, his research topic is about neural network or object detection. He also needs to use joins to carry out his code. and. They come up with an idea to build an open source project for autonomous drones that can involve more people, uh, just like uh, PEX4. Then I can contribute some code about drone control or path planning, while others can uh, contribute some code on navigation or uh, computer vision. And then we can do some simulation demo or uh, uh, some experiment with uh, drones together more easily. Prometheus can help many people. Most of them are 
master or PhD uh, students like us to save their time on the research about autonomous drones. And everyone also can contribute their own code to Prometheus project. So I think the reason to make Prometheus open source is we want to help more people and make the code more powerful. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Doctor. So it seems that the development of the Prometheus project has gone far beyond your original purpose, right? So look, we look forward to your bringing more scenes to Pix4 and Rod. So thank you. Uh, so here next we have uh, Mr. Yixing, so our engineer. We are uh, uh, so uh, Mr. Yixing. So what are the challenges of integrating Prometheus into a real drone platform? Mm, yes, everyone. Mm, the simulation is perfect as the real drone is mm. always unstable. Hello, hello. Can mm. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. How to, make, how to make drones achieve precise position is an android problem. Yeah, I think. Yes. Oh, okay, that's, that's all? Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, very very deep inside, and it seems come from a very tragic experiment failure experience. Okay, so uh, okay, so Mr. Mo uh my my boss actually. So can you tell us the ultimate goal of the Prometheus project? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I hope uh, Prometheus can become. Uh, in in standardized system for robots and open source projects with many URs. Uh, of course, it's very ultimate goal. And PX4 and the NIX are, of course, our <coughs> goals. But now the short term expectation is to integrate Prometheus into miniaturized edge computing system can be installed on <clears throat> many robots and to realize okay, their yes. intelligence. So you mean okay, like the the manifold of DJI, right? The small the small box. Uh okay yes. And we already have one. Um, oh okay. Hmm. Portal so this pack. this looks pretty cool. So thank you boss. So hope they can be commercialized soon. Okay. okay, so, well, actually, I prepared a question for myself, and uh, if no one will be asking me, I will. Yeah, so. so here, I want to talk about the market demand for the open source intelligent drone platforms. So especially in China, it's actually, uh, people, it's actually a uh, rapid growing <coughs> demand in China. Although most of our customers are universities and the research institutions. However, it is obviously that uh, the DJI, the behavior of DJI to rule all the rules of the game in the entire industry can no longer meet the needs of many people for drones. So everyone, many people is looking forward to smarter to smarter, more intelligent, and more versatile drones, to be honest. So this is one of the reasons that drove me into this industry. So OK, that's our presentation today. Thank you, guys, for listening. So here I can. So let's check some questions if we still have some time. OK, so here I see. I can see a question what sensor uh, are we using? So actually we can, uh, thank you. Um, thank you so much. So uh, about this question, we can back to the to the framework of the drone actually. So we can, uh, where, where, where it is. Uh, so this this one is cool. So uh, the most usually sensors are Intel real sense, like like T two hundred sixty five and the D four hundred and 
35, the tracking camera and depth camera and the single camera. So it's sad to hear about like the real things will shut their production line, but we, uh, we, we still want to try to find some externals. So uh, uh, in addition to the tracking camera and depth camera, the LiDAR, the 2D LiDAR is most uh, usually sensors and we use in our drones. It's all used in the uh, indoor because the tracking camera can provide uh, positioning data to the to the drone to replace the GPS data actually. So for the for the Premier 600, it's actually uh, it's still it's still lidar and uh, and a, a camera and which can tracking the the target and uh, that's basically all the sensors we use to our Prometheus drone and uh, it's actually our cust our users uh, use more about there and they share all the experience on GitHub. So let's see the next question. Will there be an English version for the Vinland course? And uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, of course, there will be the English version of all the courses as materials. It's, uh, so it's actually our all our GitHub or our comments. It's all Chinese version, actually. But yes, we have the plan to press them all into an English version at least. So thank you. So uh, here I'm wondering what MAP50. Did to get your fine with the cocoa similar data sheet of object detection. Okay, uh, doc, doctor. Check uh, this um, so I think all, the output experience all. is depends on the uh, resolution of the camera. So basically, I think we can achieve uh, 30, 30, 30 frame uh, one one per second in the uh, Nvidia NX. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doc. That's uh, that's a question one, and we still have a question two. It's all about algorithms, and uh, it's not my field. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not very very good at object detection. So I'm not uh, familiar with the MAP fifty. What, what's that? <laughs> so I ah, I got okay. it. So that's that's a part of Doctor Jinder, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Roman. Sorry, Mr. Roman. Uh, our doctor is actually charged for the for the control switch, for the control part, and and the yellow uh, the yellow version five is actually uh, charged by Dr. Jin and we, who is not in the session today. So, so sorry, we uh, we can't answer a question right now. And uh, uh, if you uh, don't mind, and I can click your questions and uh, to our Dr. Jinzen and uh, I will answer you as a as an email only or a WhatsApp or Telegram it's it's all okay so uh, if you don't mind to uh, to give me an email address later so thank you so here's a ch chat okay I think here I think here is the end of our time. And uh, OK, thank you, guys. And I think it will be the the end of, of the session. So, and on behalf of my team, I would like to thank you all. It's a brilliant night. And thank you, Pix4. Thank you, the Drone Code and the Niners Foundation, and all people joining our session. Thank you, guys. Bye.